you are inside Google Analytics and something looks off, or there's a question you can't answer, or you want to drill down and get something much more specific, there's a very powerful feature in Google Analytics, maybe the most powerful feature. It's called Segments, and this video will show you how to do it. Hi, this is Andy from Orbit Media. Orbit's a web design company here in Chicago, and we make these videos to help people get more value from their current website. Uh, we hope you find this useful. Google Analytics segments are a way to see a subset of your traffic. You can set them to include or exclude uh, visits or visitors that meet any criteria you can think of based on any dimension, any metric in analytics. They're pretty easy to create. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to show you five different examples of segments you can make that will give you really quick insights. One, to remove spam, very useful. Two, to remove visitors who log in, maybe they're current customers, like you've got a login feature on your website. Three, a more accurate way to check social media traffic. Four, measure the effectiveness of video. And five, let's separate the landing page vis uh, to show the high intent visitors from the low intent visitors. Uh, really, really powerful. Let's jump right in. Here we go. Let's use a Google Analytics segment to remove spam. I'm inside an account here now, and I can see a big spike in traffic. It looks like it's this strange traffic pattern to a certain page. Sometimes you can find spam traffic by a certain traffic source or traffic from some random country or different ways. Whatever the traffic pattern is, we got to find it. Once you find it, you can kind of confirm it. I use plot rows sometimes to double check like, oh, that's definitely it. Now I'm going to remove it. I'm going to click Add Segment, New Segment. I'm going to make a conditional segment, which is basically the only kind of segment I ever make in analytics because it it's very simple. Sessions to exclude when the page, scroll down, we're just looking to for that dimension, there's page, contains what? And there I have removed it. I will give it a name such as non-spam and click save. Now it's gone. And as I click around any of the reports, it will stay gone for as long as I leave that segment up. The next segment I want to make is to segment out people who went to a website and went straight to the login feature. All kinds of websites is a login feature and it really skews analytics to have a 90, like, a, like on a bank website. Here I'm looking at a bank website. Probably 90 plus percent of visitors go straight to this online banking button. They're not in our marketing funnel. We can't really sell you. <laughs> they're, they're, they're already customers. So the fact that they're in here really skews my, my conversion data, my bounce rate, all kinds of things are weird. Now to set up this segment, we have to do some fancy stuff first because this click is actually an exit click. Look, I, I'm on now a different website. So to track that exit click, that's a non-page view interaction. It's not a new page loading on this website. So to do that, we normally need to set up something called an event. An event tracking uh, allows us to track things that are not new page view interactions, things like video clicks, exit clicks, PDF downloads, stuff like that. So to do that, we're gonna have to go into Google Tag Manager. So here I am inside Google Tag Manager. There are tags and triggers. The tag, the, uh, an event is set up as a tag. And so this one here is called Google Analytics Event Sign-In. And like every event, it has a category and action and label. Uh, this tag is triggered on what? It's when someone clicks the sign-in button. Again, you may need help from your developer, but once it's done, we can do a brilliant bit of segmentation to remove the people who triggered that event. So now I'm going to go back into Analytics, and I'm going to click to add a new segment. Again, the red new segment button. I'm going to add a conditional segment. And the condition is going to be to exclude sessions that contain that event. I think it was event action contains sign in. Even before I save this, it's going to show me the percentage of people that are left in my segment. So I've, I've excluded almost like more than a third of my visitors. I'm going to call them non-login visits because I had it set as sessions. Click Save. And now that I have that segment in place, uh, I, every report that I look at at Analytics, 
I can see new bounce rates, I can see the conversion rate, I can see time on page. None of my reports now include anyone who touched that button, anyone who clicked that, anyone who triggered that event. Uh, so now I'm looking at just my marketing visitors and visits. Now I can get a much better idea of uh, my marketing performance now that I've excluded all of my current customers. Very useful. Now we're gonna make a segment to more accurately track visitors from social media. So social media traffic is all over the place in analytics and it's inherently difficult for Google to find and catch these people and put them all in one bucket because there's lots of different social media networks, people access them through browsers and through apps. Uh, people, there's social traffic that you drive by sharing your content. There's social media traffic that's sort of earned by other people sharing your stuff. So uh, in analytics, if you look at acquisition all traffic channels report, you will find a default channel grouping for social but also you're gonna find those people in here in the referral report. Uh, those are social networks. There's an entire section for social media. And if you track your traffic from your social posts using campaign tracking code and a UTM, UTM tracking codes through a campaign builder, it's going to, uh, the traffic's in here. So they're just sort of all over the place. And I'm not very confident in analytics ability to uh, accurately measure them for me all at once, unless I use a segment. So here's how we can use a segment to more accurately see your social media traffic. Uh, let's go to the site content all pages report. That's where we're gonna end up in a second. Of course, the ad segment button is at the top of every report. If you go to system, there isn't a social media, uh, a built-in social media segment. Go ahead and search. Nope, not there. <laughs> so we're gonna click the big red new segment button. I'm going to click an advanced conditional segment for sessions to include when the source medium contains, and then I'm gonna put the social media networks in here. But there's a bunch of them, and I wanna put them all in at once. <laughs> and so I need to use the or, which is a vertical line, that's called a regular expression. So I could type in LinkedIn or, with a pipe, Facebook or, with a pipe, Twitter, and so on. So uh, to do that, I wanna add a regular expression. I'm going to add one that is an attempt to capture all of them all at once. Got it on my clipboard. I'm copying and pasting in here. That regular expression, let's set it to be regex. That regular expression is in the description if you're watching this video on YouTube. It's in the article if you're watching this video on the Orbit Media blog. And it's my best attempt to include all the combinations of words and letters and URL shorteners and social media channels names to put them all in one place. And you can see it kind of worked, right? Look, there's the percentage of people that I'm segmenting for here. I'm gonna give it a name like social. I'm gonna click save. Now the segment's going to appear up here at the top. Now every report that I look at in analytics is just showing me people who came from social media. Again, I'm on my all pages report. Let's find out which, of, uh, which blog posts have attracted the most visitors from social media since the first of the year in this case. There they are. Voila. The next segment I wanna set up will help me measure the difference between people who watch videos on this website and people who don't. Video is a big time investment. It can be expensive to create. It, it's, a, it's an awesome format for content, but what kind of engagement impact does it have? We can measure that using a combination of uh, an event and segments. So I'm looking at an article. This one's about how to set up Google Analytics. Uh, at the top of this article, there's a video. We worked really hard at this. Uh, so is this video getting played? And uh, people who watch it, are they more likely to be engaged with this content? So the play button click is, of course, not a page view interaction. It doesn't change the URL. No new page is loaded. So to track that, we need to use a, an event set up often using Google Tag Manager. I've already set it up. I've named it uh, GA Event YouTube. Uh, YouTube ones are especially easy to create because there are built-in variables inside Google Tag Manager. Uh, if you use a different player, there are still ways to do it. You can see we're tracking other things, other Vimeo, video plays with a different event. So like every event, it has a category, an action, and a label. The category I just named video view. So that's common to every time the video gets played. So that's the one I'll be using in my segment. And it gets triggered when th these are the settings for the trigger. So uh, we have a different article, a different video that you can watch about how to track video views using, using Google Analytics. Uh, it's in this same YouTube channel. Uh, so what I'm going to do next now that, that I know that that is tracking and that video view is the category. Um, if I go look at analytics, 
behavior events overview, I can actually confirm that that, that, that event category uh, is recording in here. So now I wanna make a segment to show people who include where the visit included that event category. Uh, I'm gonna make a second one to show with the video uh, when the visit did not include that event category. So to do so, I'm going to click add a new uh, segment. I'm going to click the big red new segment button and I'm going to make it a conditional segment and it's this easy. Sessions include when the event category, just as we named it inside Analytics or inside Google Tag Manager when we created the, uh, the event, is video view. So this is gonna show me at a glance what percentage of people triggered that. It's a very small percentage. The site gets quite a bit of traffic. And I'm gonna call this video watchers. I'm gonna save this segment. And now I'm gonna make another segment to exclude the same group. Uh, new segment, conditional. Sessions to exclude when the category, no, 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 event category contained video view. Same exact thing, there we go. So now this will be all the people who didn't. These numbers sometimes don't match, <laughs> I'm never surprised. Uh, analytics is only uh, only needs to be accurate insofar as we can make better decisions with it. Never expect it to be perfectly accurate. Ask me later, I'll tell you why every number in analytics is wrong. <laughs> it's fine that it's wrong, it doesn't matter. It only, it, uh, we don't need it to be perfectly accurate. Video non-watchers. I'm starting the word, the segment name with the word video so I can find them easily when they appear in an alphabetized list. Uh, so now I save this. And in the reports, I wanna to go to find that page. Remember, I wanna do analysis on this specific page, which is called how to set up Google Analytics. And let's go to the site content all pages report. I'm going to filter to find that page quickly. Here it is. And I could drill down to see just that one row if I wanted to, and I can see the difference in engagement. The average person who, who people who didn't watch the video spent about five minutes on that page. People who did watch the video spent about 10 minutes on that page. Big, big difference. You can also see the bounce rate is about the same. To get uh, more data, you can go to the landing pages report, which show the results when that page was the first page of the visit. Uh, I'm gonna filter again to find just that page and click to drill down to see, uh, to remove every other page from that. And now I can see the impact. Uh, the bounce rate was about the same. Uh, the time on page for, for when this was the first page is about four times as long, pretty interesting. And you can see the conversion rate is about twice as high. So that'd be, in this case, the percentage of people who subscribe to the newsletter. So I now have uh, a very uh, good, a good attribution and uh, a way to show the impact of the investment in video in website engagement and conversion uh, on any URL which had that uh, a video embedded, provided that I had the event set up and these two little uh, segments in place. For the fifth and final segment, this one's pretty easy. I wanna look at just people who start their visit on a blog post. Those people often search for information intent queries. They don't have strong intent. They might be trying to do the, you know, solve the problems themselves, kind of a DIY visitor or just looking for an answer to a question. Versus people who start their visit on a sales page, on a service page, on a page that's promoting our business. Uh, if you don't do this segment and you look at analytics in the conversion goals overview report, you may see a conversion rate that is dramatically deflated by all of the uh, high traffic blog posts that you've published over the years. That makes it look like the website is broken, <laughs> even though it may not be. So I'm gonna click to add a segment, a new segment. In this segment, I'll start by making the one for people who start their visit on a blog post. So if you're getting the hang of this by now, you can imagine what I'm about to do. Sessions to include when the landing page contains the word blog. And that is 94% of visitors. We'll call it uh, blog landers and save that segment. And I'm gonna make a second segment to see just people who were in the opposite group. And these will be called um, non-blog landers, uh, blog non-landers, something like this. Uh, I'll call them non-blog landers here for now. And you can imagine it's gonna be just as simple, a conditional segment to include when the landing page does not contain 
blog, the word blog. These are the other group of people. And for this, I'll call them non-bloglanders. And I'll save that segment. I think I've got three segments up here now, which is going to get confusing. If you want to remove a segment, you can just click to remove, or I think it's possible to just drag. Great. So now I can see that the overall conversion rate for people that start their visit on a blog post is indeed lower, but the site's quite healthy. People who start their visit on a sales page, the conversion rate for those visitors is very high. Site's performing well. I have simply excluded from this, uh, in this report or shown them separately, uh, people who have low intent versus high intent, as in people who start their visit on a blog post, kicking tires, looking for answers versus people who are somewhat qualified, they've got their wallet out, they need help, they're willing to become a lead. So now I can see them both uh, side by side and get a better understanding of the persuasive and conversion power of my website's sales pages. And that was it. We hope you found this really useful. Again, uh, Andy from Orbit Media, uh, subscribe if you want to get these as soon as they come out. We'll keep making them. Uh, thanks for watching and feel free to pass this along to anyone you know that's struggling to get more value uh, from their website or more useful data from Google Analytics.